Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think most of you come here because you want to find answers to your problem. So uh, what I try to do today is to tell you how to uh, protect yourself. But before I go there, I like to basically introduce uh, how we intend to protect Singapore, which is basically the Singapore cyber security strategy. And uh, that's the first part. So that is just to um, introduce uh, how CSA is, is doing that piece of work. And after that, I will show you uh, how to do the security by design. And based on that, uh, then you will be able to find what are the solutions they're looking for, whether it's dark trace, M1, and, and so forth. And at the end, I'm going to show you two demonstrations uh, to give you a quick answer to hopefully some of your current problems uh, if you're using Windows uh, OS. <coughs> okay, the Singapore cybersecurity strategy actually has uh, four pillars. Right? The first pillar, of obviously, is to build a resilient uh, infrastructure. So this is the work that is done by my division, basically uh, providing consultancy, providing advice, uh, work with the sector leads like MAS, MPA, and all to secure the, the various uh, infrastructure. The second piece is creating a safer cyberspace. Primarily, this is about the people, you, uh, the small, um, and the businesses, right? Um, the cyber crime part is also part of this pillar. But cybercrime is under the police or Ministry of Home Affairs. But we do work with them uh, very carefully, uh, sorry, very closely. Example, when you watch, when you do the crime watch, especially those that are talking about uh, uh, love scam and all that, uh, we actually, CSA actually works with the police uh, and the um, uh, media call to produce those uh, episodes. And what I'm talking about uh, later on is actually part of parcel of this safer cyberspace about giving advice how you can uh, protect yourself. The other uh, pillar, the third pillar, is developing a vibrant uh, cybersecurity ecosystem. All right, this is where CSA has a division uh, called the Ecosystem Development Division. Uh, we will work with the vendors uh, to bring business into Singapore uh, to make sure that we train the people. All right. If you read some of the cybersecurity um, manpower development uh, effort, even with IMDA, uh, the CSA component is working with them to make sure that that happens. Right. And the last but not least is actually uh, strengthening the um, international partnerships. Because in cyber, there is no border actually. It's, it's the whole world. So we need to make sure we have good partnerships to make sure that we can, uh, as a global effort, to, to uh, raise the cybersecurity hygiene to protect ourselves against the bad guys. <coughs> All right. The how-to is really everything you want to do, you must always start with security by design. Unfortunately, many of the developers today or even startups and uh, even some of the matured companies the pressure to market is very great. So what they feature is or focus on is basically all the features and functionalities. And then later on, uh, they try to put in the security component. All right. If you do that, uh, chances are you will have problems. All right. So you always start with uh, security by design. To do, to do security by design, first and foremost, you need to know uh, the threat to your business proposition. All right, the, the people you need to deal with, the stakeholders, the environment, and where you want to do it. All right. With this, then you can then decide whether you need to take a risk avoidance approach or a risk management, risk, uh, uh, management approach. And the kind of threats you have to deal with, all right, you need to cover both the man-made as well as the, the natural ones. Uh. If you're in data center business, for example, you would want to build your data center in a flood-prone area, an earthquake-prone area, for example. That's an example of, of what are the... In Singapore, we are blessed, right? The natural disaster is very uh, low, except once in a while you get flooding. Right? 
Right. So most of the time, our concern are man-made, all right, uh, hackers and insiders. All right. These are the two primary areas that uh, they need to focus on. So when you do your threat analysis, all right, you will focus on what are the scenarios that you are concerned about in your particular situation and what you think are the possible uh, security controls that you need to put in place. And then your conclusion you can summarize into a matrix like this. The left-hand column are all your scenarios that you're concerned about. On the top are all the controls that you think you likely to put in place. Right. And given the matrix, you can actually identify a set of optimized solution to deal with your problems. That means there may be 20 over solutions, but you don't need to take all of them. All right? You can find one that is uh, uh, do that. The Olympic rings are placed there to show you that your threat or the kind of, even if it's a small company, the kind of threat you're dealing with uh, from all over the world. That means your standard of cybersecurity, you need to play in the Olympics games. You cannot play in sea games and uh, even Asian games. All right, that's the level for cybersecurity. That is why CSA is set up and we are trying our best to using the four pillars of, uh, of the strategy to help everybody raise their level of security in Singapore. And for those of you who needs to explain to your bosses some of the threat and how, how some of the controls are, are effective, this is one of the ways you can do that. All right? Because with this link diagram, you can trace from the threat to the solution. Now, having said that, uh, you need to do that part. And in the end of the conclusion, and this is based on our experience, we, we really need to have an integrated, uh, multi-layered kind of security approach. All right? This, you definitely need to have defense in that. So the key point here is people used to tell you defense in that, but the key, that, that's not the issue. The key is integrated. All right? That's why, for example, the M1 solution, where they try to do everything, integrate for you, uh, that's one option. One, uh, concept or one possibility you can, can go on. In our case, I'm trying to say that based on our analysis, there are six essential things you need to do. All right? How you do it, uh, it is up to your company, up to your, your security partners, but essentially these are the six things that you need to do to protect against problems like uh, advanced persistent threat, zero day, uh, and ransomware. This six doesn't cover things like denial of service, all right? Uh, because those are a uh, different level of uh, threat that is happening in the different areas. So the, the six is because in our analysis, all the attack so far must still come into your organization, which is basically your endpoints, all right? Whether you're insider uh, or rather if it's external, they will try to come into your, your endpoints and assume to be an insider, because only insider have credentials to move around to do a lot of bad things. So this is what we are focusing on today. Uh, the mobile solution, I'm still working on it. Uh, the cloud IoT, that's something we're still working on it. All right. So for insiders, basically the issue is you trust them, but you still need to verify. So it's up to you to figure out. Uh, some solutions like uh, privilege access management is probably one area you need to do, but those uh, depend on your company. If it's big, you can do that. If you're small, it's quite expensive. But the principle is still that, like you need to trust by verifying. Right. Then we actually brought up earlier by Anthony, uh, you need backup. All right, whatever you need, you need to have backup. But make sure your backup is clean. So no point backing up a, a ransomware which happened to some companies and that company has to close shop. The last one is I think a lot of people it's not, uh, most of the time doesn't practice. You have to destroy your data securely. I don't know, how many of you actually trade in your phones with your telco? Do you clean up the data in your phone before you trade? Or in the expos, you know, the IT fair and all, they give you a very good discount when you, when you trade in your PC, all right? And there are a lot of examples shown that um, a lot of this type of uh, hard disk that ends up in the, in the market, then people start to get 
information from there. So make sure you destroy your data uh, before you dispose it. All right, so what are the six essentials? Basically, you need to know uh, your asset. All right, your asset can be IPs, can be software, hardware, whatever. you need to know. All right, this is part and parcel of Sun Tzu. If you know yourself, all right, at least you are able to, to plan and fight against the enemy. If you do not know yourself, forget it. Every battle you will lose. All right? So that's the first principle. How you do it will be then, if you know your asset, that means in this case for IT, and you know your software, you know your hardware, then you can manage who is in and who is out. And you want to use dark trace or whatever, you, you, at least you know what are the, the good guys that you need to deal with. Then the technology bit is the second bit. You only allow authorized software to work. Like Anthony said, a lot of things are all software. One, uh. Okay? The difference here we are talking about in CSA is that it is application control and not just application whitelisting. Many people tell you application whitelisting is good enough, but that is not the, the case. You must be able to say that this is a Microsoft Word product. It can only do word processing. If the Microsoft Word product is starting to scan, uh, that one you need to block. Okay, that's what I mean by application control. You need to go down that level. And in this case, I'm using Microsoft exam because the government is using Microsoft, but this concept can be applied to any uh, operating system or any applications that you want to do. But that's the key point. The other one is, of course, you need to reduce vulnerabilities. And the current method is about patching. La. The issue is, if Microsoft know there's vulnerability, you can patch. La. If it doesn't know, no patch. Right? But you still need to patch the applications that you need to. Like I said, any extended attacker that comes in must try to raise their privilege. So you should make sure your, your accounts that you give to your users have limited or restricted admin privileges. Makes the attacker work harder. La. Now, earlier Mr. Kung has mentioned, and even Grace, the current issue is not, you will not be attacked. Eh? You will be attacked, but you do not know when. You'll be breached. All right? The issue is, you make sure when you are breached, you know it immediately. So that's why you need to make sure you have continuous monitoring. So a model like M1 or any of the telcos that are doing this monitoring for you 24 by 7 is a good way of dealing with this issue, especially for small companies where you cannot create your own S uh, security ops center, raise your own manpower to, to do all this work. All right. Last but not least, based on the metrics that we did, multi-factor authentication is another way to make sure that only the good guys have access to your application, your resources, all right? So these are the, the key, the six things that you need to do. You can do it in the cloud. As of, but unfortunately today, I have not found a cloud provider that can do all of this, uh, but I'm trying to encourage them to, to work on this. Now, if you've got the other things that you want to do, or example, crown jewels are very important. The only way to protect crown jewels is basically encryption. All right, plus uh, other ways of tracking that data has gone out and not, but even you track the data has gone out, it's actually a bit too late, la. all right? Unless you are able to block it instantly. Otherwise, you make sure that your data is encrypted. At least it gives you that protection, even though the data is out of your control. Right. Now, the other things are the, the protecting the, uh, uh, exploitation and so forth. So these are these are the things that you can find uh, on the website uh, Go Safe Online that Anthony has mentioned. All right, Go Safe Online is the CSA uh, website that provides information for all of you to, to to go and check how to protect yourself, how to deal with some of the problems, find answers uh, to some of the problems that you may have. Okay. <coughs> now. What I'm going to do now is to demonstrate that I can do all of these things very simply, all right? 
And this is what I call the Singapore answer because this was done in Singapore only. No one has done it anywhere else. But the concept uh, we're trying to encourage is people to try to make this integrated solution for you. Uh. All right. So this is something that uh, uh, MINDEF did with a local vendor. All right. That's why this is a, what we call a public-private uh, partnership type of things. But in this case, our focus was APTs uh, because MINDEF is concerned about APTs. And we also know that whatever solution we come up with is not the silver bullet. So our solution must be able to work with other solutions all right, and, and not uh, create incompatibilities. So this solution can work on uh, McAfee, Daptrace, uh, any, any other uh, solutions you want to find. So in this case, the analysis was about endpoints. So in this case, we will put an agent on your endpoints, whether it's a laptop or a servers. Once you have an end agent in there, every agent you deploy on your own asset, automatically you know what are your assets, both the hardware as well as the software. So in one go, you know what you have. All right, this is the software list uh, you can, can pick up. All right. Now, because you know your software, and you are able to track it on the real time, you also know what software is not updated. So straight away, you have vulnerability uh, knowledge. And with this, you then patch your software. Okay. So in this case, like I say, in, in one um, uh, example, you can have, you're able to maintain all of that. Now, because you have the information of all this, you are also having security monitoring in a sense. Huh? But it's a very cheap, uh, way of doing it, not, don't have to use expensive uh, SIM and so forth. But a bit manual, but unfortunately, you want to keep it simple and uh, simple, this is how you can do it. Lah. You know, quick go. Now, this is to demonstrate the technology part of it. All right. So, uh, we are going to play two demos. All right. One is against an unpatched system. The other one is against an unwitting user. We also know there are certain things that you the, the people need to click on. If I'm HR, someone send me a resume, you tell them don't click. Uh. Cannot what? They must click. So how to prevent, how to protect them? All right, so the second example uh, cover that kind of situation. This is a second demo against an unwitting uh, user.
Okay, so for people who are using Microsoft, uh, and even if you don't have Windows 10, you're running on Windows 7 and all, which is what they're shown in the demo. But basically, actually, if you run Windows XP SP2, this solution will still protect you. All right? Because it basically controls whatever application is installed and manages that the application uh, behaviors. Thanks. So for those of you uh, who are interested, uh, this is a free for the conference. Uh, it's a two-year full license, and you all can try it uh, at home. This is one way for CSA to help the, the users at home la, right, by providing some of these kind of solutions, especially our Windows uh, operators. All right, thank you. <laughs>